Hi friends, it's your old pal Papa Dale here once again with another episode of Christ vs. Culture. This is the video series that's based on 1 John 2.15, which says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And what this means is, the implications of this is, that we are supposed to love and revere Jesus Christ above anything else in life. And uh, this is literally one of just hundreds of videos that are being uploaded to YouTube. I think we're somewhere close to 300 now, uh, about halfway there, I think. Um, and these are uh, videos that are created from articles that I've written over time uh, that uh, are intended for two reasons. One, to provide an educational content that will uh, edify the Christian community today. And two, to leave a legacy of content for folks who will be left behind after the rapture. Now, who am I? Well, I'm Papa Dale, <laughs> and I am a retired pastor, teacher, theologian, chaplain, evangelist, businessman, done a lot of things in 50 plus years in service to the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, it's important that you should know something about anyone who says they're going to teach you something about the Bible, because the scripture says that in the end times, a lot of false teachers will go out into the world. You may need to make sure that you're not listening to false teachers. So I've uploaded a, a video about me uh, that tells a little bit about my education, schools I went to, churches I've served, family life, and so forth. That's one way you can get an idea about a person that's uh, trying to teach about the Bible. But the most important way is listen to their teaching, compare it to what the scripture says. It's got to be consistent and got to be congruent with the whole counsel of the Word of God, not just the scripture here or there that have been that's been cherry picked and pulled out of context, but the whole counsel of the Word of God. This video today, the topic is confusion in the church, and brother is there. Confusion in the church. Saint Augustine said, had it exactly right when he said, quote, "In essential things, unity. In non-essential things, liberty. In all things, charity. And that's St. Augustine of, Chip, of Hippo, one of the post-Patristic fathers, uh, post-Nicene fathers, uh, that wrote about 354 AD. A huge challenge in Christendom occurs when Christians, pastors, or denominations seek to make Something which is non-salvific, a non-essential belief, a teaching or doctrine that they say is necessary for salvation. That is absolutely wrong, bad, not good. <laughs> and there are many, many, many teachings in the Bible, or based in the Bible, which while they may be good, are not necessary for salvation. Historic examples of these include circumcision, eating kosher, keeping the law, observing Jewish festivals, worship on Saturday, wearing or not wearing certain clothes, wearing or not wearing jewelry, becoming a church member, regular church attendance, giving money to the church, mandatory confession of sins, to a human being, baptism, type of baptism, age of baptism, name of God used in baptism, communion, belief in a secondary doctrine, going forward in a church service, raising your hand in a church service, asking Jesus into your heart, speaking in tongues, praying a certain prayer, believing in the specific word order of a prayer, easy believism, Lordship, salvation, never sinning, word of faith, name it and claim it, not having musical instruments in worship, calling God and Jesus by their original names, prosperity gospel, the congruent application of all scripture understood in context 
with proper literary hermeneutics and exegetic application reveals that the essential things are believing these. 1. I am a sinner bound for eternal hell and helpless to save myself. 2. I repent. I turn from my sin. I turn to God and fall on his mercy. 3. I trust that Christ, God who became man, suffered, died in my place to pay my sin debt and physically rose from the dead. 4. I commit to forever following him as my Lord and Savior, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 8. Now, as soon as you sincerely believe and commit to these, the Bible says you are born again, born of the Holy Spirit, a saved child of God. If any church includes some of the non-essentials, the, the list that we went through earlier, in their worship or tradition, uh, that may be fine. Some of them may not be fine, but some of them are fine. They're okay. But when they teach anything other than the work of Christ, the four essentials that I mentioned above as necessary for salvation, they are polluting the gospel and leading people away from the truth. Salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. If you trust in Christ's work and baptism, or church membership, or your good deeds for salvation, I hate to break the news to you, you are not truly saved. You're not, according to the scripture. Now, you might, you might say to yourself, well, wait a minute, but I believe in Jesus. I also just believe in this over, over here, too. Paul says in Galatians chapter 1, if you add anything to the gospel that he preaches, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, crucified, buried, rose from the dead, following him as Lord and Savior, if you believe anything other than that, then your salvation is questionable. Okay? But you say, well, it's just something that I believe. Belief is the basis of everything. You see, there's a physical world, everything that we do and say, and all the, the elements of our life's existence. But then there's a metaphysical world. That's the world that God lives in, in his transcendence, and there's a very thin thread that connects the two worlds. The metaphysical world is actually the power source. It is the power that allows the physical world to function. I tell my grandkids, it's like uh, the invisible hand inside of a glove. The glove is visible. The glove, you can see it when it works power, but the source of the power is the invisible hand inside the glove. And there's a relationship there between the metaphysical and the physical. And it connects by a very thin thread in our minds. That's the connection, our thoughts. So it, it's extremely important what we believe. So if you sincerely trust in Christ's work and baptism, or rather in Christ's work, and that's all, Christ's work alone, how did I phrase it? Salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, and in his work. If you trust in Christ's work and in baptism, or and in church membership, or and that your good deeds for salvation outweigh any of the bad things you've done in life, you're not truly saved. You're not. 
Salvation can only be earned by being good or, excuse me, salvation cannot be earned. Let me say it again. Salvation cannot be earned by being good or doing good or by adding anything from the list above to what Christ already did. God's standard is perfection. Jesus said, be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. How can we do that? We can't, unless our perfection is found in Christ. God's standard is perfection. How good would you need to be to be perfect? So God gives perfection as a free gift to those who will just trust him, simply trust him, quote, for by grace are you saved through faith. That's not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, not of anything that you can do, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. The next step, now this is important. You got to really pay attention here because people mix this up all the time. They conflate the two. The first stuff that we were just talking about is salvation. Also in theology, it's called justification. That's over and done with now. You are believing in Jesus Christ alone for your salvation, trusting only in him, only in what he did. Yeah, okay, you've been baptized. Yeah, okay, you belong to a church. Yeah, okay, you do good works. But those are not the bases of your salvation. Your salvation in your mind is only in what the Lord Jesus Christ did. Okay, that's justification. That's salvation. Now, the next step after salvation is called, in theology, sanctification. That is progressing towards being like Jesus Christ. Learning to think like he thinks. Learning to behave like he would behave. Quote, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2.5 Sanctification is not salvation. Sanctification. And sanctification, not salvation, includes being good and doing good. But that's not salvation. It's not for your own sake. But it's just simply as a thank you to Christ, intending to honor him thereby. What it is, it's getting your own mind and heart in sync with the mind and heart of God Almighty. Now, many churches confuse what salvation means with what sanctification means. This is the origin of many items on the above list. Some people are just sincerely wrong, based on what the whole of Scripture teaches. Others, very evil people, try to make their brand of Christianity as exclusive as they can to build their congregation numbers, to build their own personal finance, to build their own power. Quote, they say, quote, you can't be saved unless you join with us. They say, it's just a business. This accounts for some of the others on this list as well. When you become born again, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is born in you and will lead you into the truth about these things if you sincerely seek it from him in prayer and reading the Bible. Remember, God is never the author of confusion, 1 Corinthians 13.33. By default, that means the spiritual source of confusion is Satan. Seek the truth in prayer and scripture, always trusting in Christ alone. Now, if you have questions, you can, you can private message me, and I'll be happy to talk with you and answer them. In the comments section below, you're going to be able to find a, a link to my Facebook page. You can private message me there. And uh, if you have comments, questions, or prayer requests, 
you can leave them below. If you're going to get real lengthy about comments, then leave those on my Facebook page also. And uh, if you want to uh, uh, go through this lesson a little more slowly, you can do so. There's a link to be able to uh, read these lessons just in print if you wish to. Now, the rapture's coming right up, and I'm an old guy, and I could die at any time. And the fact of the matter is, is that I live to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone. And so if it's the Lord's will that I upload another video, I'll do so. I'll, it's my plan. I'm thinking that I will. I'm, I'm thinking that the rapture won't come. I'm thinking that I'll be able to live to make another, to make another video. But well, maybe not. We'll see. But until then, until the next video, it's your old pal Papa Dale signing off for now saying, I am going to be praying for each and every one of you that ever have watched any of my videos. And I'm going to be praying that you will be well and that you will be blessed. And as always, that's two thumbs up for you. <laughs>